Climate Summit strengthen Africa's position on global emission reduction, adaptation and resilience? I think the first thing, bringing the conversation you know, to the forefront and getting African leaders to commit, but also the carbon tax was an important one for me as well. Yeah, there were, there were clear outcomes around catalyzing investments for climate uh, innovation. Um, there was a new conversation around uh, the need for to stimulate private capital. It definitely strengthened Africa's position at a, at a global level. Uh, it made very clear that the African developmental paradigm is one that needs to be taken into consideration. I think one of the primary things for me that I thought was very important was one, to see the heads of state come out and say climate is an important issue. We need to pay attention to it, both within our countries, our continent, but also um, the role that we are playing in the global energy transition, that's one. Um, the second thing is, I think that we got to discuss uh, issues that are a bit difficult to discuss, um, like uh, carbon tax, for example. Um, there was a call to, you know, introduce carbon tax to the heaviest polluters around the world, which is a conversation that could not happen unless, you know, Africa came in and said, hey, look, um, we're the most affected by this thing called climate change. But when you look at the global and the grand scheme of things, we're not the heaviest polluter polluters. So can we have a discussion about this and how do we ensure that the, the space that we're playing is, is in is equitable? So for me, I think the first thing, bringing the conversation, you know, to the forefront and getting African leaders to commit, but also the carbon tax was an important one for me as well. Yeah, there were, there were clear outcomes around catalyzing investments for climate uh, innovation. Um, there was a big conversation around uh, the need for to stimulate private capital um, globally to be able to catalyze climate industry, innovation and industry across Africa. Um, so that Africa is just not another consumer of climate innovation, but we also could uh, develop and build solutions that are relevant to either mitigate or adapt uh, to the effects of climate change. Um, but also a big conversation outcome around uh, stimulating innovative public-private partnerships, understanding that uh, public institutions continue to face mounting challenges of debt, of, 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 of um, collapsing uh, fiscal prices, of inflation, there's a need for them to build uh, partnerships with the private sector and be able to stimulate uh, and grow uh, climate investment. So I believe that those were one of the major things that, that were the outcomes from the Africa Climate Summit. If you raise the question about how, are the, how was the summit relevant to specific countries, I would say it's somewhat uneven. And I think it's uneven in, in the sense that uh, not all African countries were able to uh, present perhaps their, their case in terms of how they are tackling NDCs or what do they see the other sort of climate opportunities within their own uh, nation state? But I think if we take the African lens uh, before we go into the nation state perspective, it definitely strengthened Africa's position at, the, at a global level. Uh, it made very clear that the African developmental paradigm is one that needs to be taken into consideration. The importance of low carbon development, understanding climate resilient pathways, understanding affordable financing and the ability to scale that financing is essential but also to say that the climate opportunity for Africa is vast. This is an important pivot from the perception that Africa is a place that is uh, dominated by the requirements of aid, but that in fact to say that this is a continent in which one out of four people will be African by the year 2050. This is a place where there is a growing um, uh, consensus that Africa's transitioning probably fastest in the world in terms of uh, getting towards being middle class, uh, these middle class dynamics are going to have demands on terms of consumption and production. And there's an excellent opportunity for the continent to not only address her own developmental needs, but to actually show the rest of the world how it can leapfrog some of the mistakes that have been done in other areas in terms of the just, uh, just energy transition amongst others. Also important to mention that Africa still has an abundance of the planet's biodiversity. There has been some... Uh, some views, which I, I would say is problematic, that this biodiversity, whether it's in terms of forests or, or, or other sorts of resources, means that Africa should not be developing. What we want to show as Africans is that we can not only conserve our precious resources, tropical rainforest, for example, being one, um, but that we can actually capitalize on these resources in an intelligent way, in a climate smart way, in order to tackle climate change. So the idea that one has to choose between climate and jobs is a false one. 
And that was a very important narrative that needed to be put forward to the world, that in fact, there are jobs through climate and we need to get both state and non-state actors to understand that it's not an either or, but it's a both and uh, and strategic situation. The Africa Climate Summit strengthened Africa's position on global emission reduction, adaptation and resilience. It emphasized fair, equitable and inclusive low carbon development and it encouraged implementation of national determined contributions and AU climate change strategies. It also fostered new partnerships and climate investment and it attracted financing and pledges to support Africa's climate agenda. Thank you.